Hey everyone, this is Colt Nose, and you're listening to Missing Curfew. Fella, my man. Fella Fridays continue. Ryder Cup starting today. When this comes out, the Ryder Cup will be on. I'm going to be in Wichita <laughs> watching it. But I'm fired up, buddy. Ryder Cup week. Um, I mean, if you're a golf fan, how can you not love this tournament? I am a golf fan. I love this tournament. Um, this and the Masters, to me, are what you have to stop life for to watch you stop in your track you definitely stop you sit on the couch and you fucking take it yeah you'll be uh meeting the parents meet the fuckers (laughs) and uh big shot fucker listen um i look back at all those moments of Ryder cup history it's it's a great weekend man and and for kids i always think why was i so into golf when i was a kid is the masters is Ryder cup Mm -hmm. even though you mentioned we're canadians you know we we cherish the north american spirit here and um we're in for a great weekend I'm pumped. We got our green cards. We got our green cards, yeah. Speaking of uh, Canada, the next President's Cup is in Montreal at Montreal Country Club. Montreal. Fella tour. See you there. Mike Weir's the captain. I hope he picks a bunch of Canadians. But anyways, we're getting off topic. It's called the Tour de Fella. Tour de Fella. Tour de Fella. Tour de Fella. (laughs) Tour de Fella with a Putin. So a little bit of info on our guest today, Colt Yost. Yost. Sick glass. Yoster. Yoster. Uh, listen, 38 years old. He's a fellow like the boys. Uh, went to college. He went to SMU. A lot of babes there. Good campus. Real uh, good campus. Right out of college, earned the 2004 Western Athletic Conference Freshman of the Year. PJ debuted in 2008. He was we talk about that. Like his his experiences with Tiger is pretty awesome. Um, and his rookie year, man, he multiple top top 10 finishes. Pay one checks, vict- baby. One Pay victory checks. on the 2008. Fort Smith Classic on the web.com tour. And then right now, more importantly, he's having the time of his life as a popular golf commentator on CBS with Jim Nance and the crew. Uh, they're the best to watch, by the way. Yeah, and he's got his golf podcast, Golf Subpar. It's unbelievable. A lot, a lot like Mr. Curfew. They just come on there like he talks about in this. as Just wants to be himself. Good guy. He's good for the game. Uh, anybody that's a friend with Max Homa is a friend of ours. And thank you to Killer for setting it up. But yeah, this will be a good one. Welcome back to Mr. Curfew, Updog, uh, Ryder Cup week here. We're fired up. We're Canadian. We don't really have, a, obviously, you know, any skin in the game. But we live in the States now. We've become buddies with Max Holma. Um, you know, Alex Killorn. we got to thank Killorn for this one. So we, we figured we'd try to get a guy on. And who better than Colton Yost from the Subpar Podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time, Colt. We really appreciate it, fella. Guys, thank you so much for having me. Huge fans of you guys. Y'all absolutely kill it. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. So like we were saying off the top there, we uh, we actually bumped into you a couple of years ago at the Bird's Nest at the Phoenix Open. We were kind of across the pass. I think we had a cocktail together. And then I bumped into you the next week at Riviera, and I kind of yelled at you. I said, how are you feeling after last weekend? And you're like, I'm shaking it off. I'm feeling all right. Boy, that's a that's a long week for us out here in Scottsdale. It's a lot of fun, um, but it's one of those ones, you know, you're excited when it gets there, but you're very excited when it's over because you're on your deathbed come Sunday afternoon, Monday morning. Um, yeah, Mondays are tough heading up to Riviera after Phoenix Open. Dude, I have to see Scott still. It'll yeah. get it'll get you. I had uh, dinner last night with a guy who's a Thunderbird who's a buddy of mine, Darcy Horderchuk, one of my former teammates. Oh. I, I, Colt, I asked him, I said, how do you guys wear those outfits for seven days straight and drink? Like, how, they, you must be dead at the end. He's like, buddy, it's the longest week of my life being a Thunderbird. Well, he is just, he's special himself. <laughs> I've, I've been to Vegas with that man. Yeah. So I, I've seen it and. Uh, with the gas pedal down. He is a lot of fun. But those guys, I don't know honestly how they do it. I mean, they are out the golf course like 6 a.m. and then they go to the bird's nest afterwards. I mean, they literally are on two, three hours of sleep every single night. Yeah, and those, those like I said, those outfits don't breathe. Man. I know, they do it with me? a smile on their face too. They're taking care of everybody. They're giving passes out. They're bringing guys backstage. But there is a secret sauce to what they're doing. Underneath that stadium, they got all the IVs and they're getting hydrated. Yeah. I mean, they're they're getting taken care of. But... That place wouldn't that wouldn't be a golf tournament without those guys, those Thunderbirds who put on that that thing. They're there's they're a special no, they, group of guys. They do such a great job. I mean, they raise so much money for charity, but it's a party for them, boys. Don't act like it's too close. Not feel sorry for <laughs> yeah, them. It ain't yeah. hard work for them. Yeah, go, All you gotta do is be like, hey, here's a bunch of booze, some really good golfers, and y'all go party and let's have some fun. Yeah, beautiful women everywhere. Hey, uh, <laughs> when, when you were on tour, did you did you embrace that atmosphere? Because we we know some guys they will, they'll, they will not go anywhere near. Were you like, bring it on? I, I kind of like this atmosphere. I absolutely loved it. Yeah, I'm a guy that likes to have a good time. I my mom always wanted to come out. I told her no, just because they they, they get rude out there, especially on Saturday and Sunday when they're rather hungover. 
But man, I love it. Uh, going into 16, like, I don't care who you are. Your adrenaline's going. You're jacked up. You're excited. And my deal was like, I'm going to go with the pin every day because if you do something really special, I mean, they're going to remember you forever. You make bogey, yeah, they'll boo you for a second. And the next day you come back, make birdie, they love you again. So it's no big deal. It is. But it's unlike anything else in, in golf, that's for sure. You know, people try to replicate it all the time. But uh, there's only one, you know, Coliseum in, in the game of golf, and it's 16 at Phoenix Open. It, it's crazy. And obviously, depending on the win, this and that, but, like, typically, would you take an extra, uh, like, maybe one less club because you were charged up? Oh, or, like, yeah. would you just try to smooth it? Or what were you thinking going in there? Oh, yeah. You definitely factor in the adrenaline. Yeah. I mean, you knock six, seven yards off at least. Uh, I was playing with Harold Varner his first time through. And I remember his, you know, players and caddies, they kind of signal each other what they're hitting. Like, you kind of can pick peek in the bag. And see what you're hitting. And I see he's got eight iron out on, on Thursday, I believe. And I'm like, I look at my caddy. I'm like, this thing is out of here. There's no <laughs> chance. It's all. And he flew the back right bunker up against the grandstand. And I looked, I go, what the hell was that? He goes, it was a perfect eight iron. And I'm like, dude, you were so fired up. There was no way that ball was ever going to touch the green. Maybe he saw a couple ladies in the back, uh, in the back box. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, I want to hit it back there. Yeah, I got to get over there and show off. I'll tell you. I'll tell you all a funny story about that hole. So my last ever PGA Tour event was Phoenix Open. And I had former NHL great Ray Whitney on the back. Oh, who nice. Love the wizard. Good. He's the man. So he's caddying for me. And the first day we go through there and he, we get to, we get to 17. He's like, I don't understand how y'all do that. Like, I couldn't even talk and give you any advice. Like, I was so nervous in there. Friday afternoon, we go through there and I mark my ball and I'm going to toss it to him to clean it. I look over and he's over in front of the gallery flexing his caps. <laughs> They're all chanting at him. And I'm like, hey. Dip shit. Come over here and clean my ball. He's like, I'm having fun with this. He's the best, though, man. Um, that is truly a special week. I, I look forward to it every year. He, he's a stick, yeah. I mean, we're lucky. We're looking forward to this year. Our, our sponsor, DraftKings, their sports book is going to be officially open right at the entrance this week. So, yeah. So me and the update are going to come out all week. So we'll, we'll definitely catch up with you during that week. But uh, Alex Killhorn, we got to thank Killer for the introduction. Uh, he's the newest member of the NIF Ducks. I teed it up with him last week. He's an absolute stick. But how did you meet Killer? And how good is this golf game in your opinion? Have you taken some money off of more importantly? So I don't think we've actually ever played together. Um, I actually caddied for him in Tahoe this year, but to how we met, it was during COVID. They were doing limited fans. I was doing the tournament down in Tampa, um, the Valspar Championship. He's down there playing for the Lightning. Brendan Morrow, who's a good friend of mine, I texted him. I was like, Do you have, can you hook me up with any of the Lightning guys uh, to go to the game? So he puts me on a text with Killer, left me a couple ticks. We just stayed in touch. And then I was out in Tahoe um, this past year, doing the tournament out there and he's like i got a couple buddies coming in they don't really know what they're doing um you want a caddy i'm like sure i got lake tahoe for a week sounds incredible um he had such a good time he played so well the first day and honestly could have been better um we were in the we were in the last pairing or last group on saturday with steph curry and joe pavelski was utterly one of the day that steph curry made the hole in one on number eight uh but my man he was it was his first time he was rather nervous I like to joke that he was more nervous than Nick Cannon on Father's Day. Um, <laughs> couldn't, har- couldn't hardly talk on the range, but what a cool experience it was, you know, walking around with him there. I mean, Steph is God around there. I mean, yeah. so many Warriors fans, and he's obviously a really good player. But we got to 17 there on the water, and, I mean, it was such a cool scene. It was, you know, one of my favorite moments I've had in the game of golf. Yeah, amazing. That, that was that was pretty special. Mine was watching this guy get a hole-in-one in Ireland. Yeah. Um, let me ask oh, you this. Nice. Yeah, we'll get into that. Let me ask you. Uh, so you're caddying for killer. You've had Whitney on your bag. What is it between a golfer and a hockey guy? Like, what can you give him tip wise from a guy that's used to like that nerves, you know, where your hands get a little sticky. You got some people that you're like heads up over here. Like <laughs> one goes off the toe, you're toast. Well, what do you kind of, what was like your message to killer to kind of calm down and just play and have fun? Yeah. I was just trying to stay in his ear and just chirping and having a good time, you know, being positive. Uh, but the biggest thing I thought I could help him on the greens, just reading putts. Um, that, I mean, that's kind of my specialty, you know, and just playing at altitude there in Tahoe too. It's a big difference. So just adjusting those numbers for him. Um, but you know, I, he, like I said, he played so well the first day, it could have been even better. We could have been right there. Um, if not in the lead right there at it. And then I, I, I knew he was going to be tight when the pairings came out that afternoon and he saw he was with Steph Curry. You could see is like, okay, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going to feel it a little bit tomorrow. And you know, it's a tough situation. You have no idea how your body's going to react under that kind of pressure. I mean, he's never played golf in front of that many people. I mean, it's literally, there's thousands of people down both sides of the fairway. And I mean, this guy's used to hitting hockey pucks and can bank it off the glass. No problem. This is, you're going to bank it off somebody's head. Yeah. I, you know what? He said that last week. He's like, when I, when I was with Curry and the cameras and the people, and he's like, dude, I, I just, 
And it's so right, Colt, like, I'm not a great golfer, but when my my career ended, I, my, my first ever horse race I got into, right? Like, obviously played pretty good. Me, me and Lupa won our, won our flight, and I get there, and there's, what, 40 people standing there? And I'm just <laughs> yeah. like, all of a sudden, it's just like, I, I can't describe, like, what came over me, Colt. I was just like, what the fuck's going on here? Breathe, kid. Breathe. Like, you cannot, I can't imagine being in a tournament, but the feeling of the pressure, it's unlike anything else when it comes to golf. Well, I try all my message to him, you know, going out there Saturday was like, dude, this is what you want. Like you have a chance to win this golf tournament. Like this is what you practice for. This is what you're here to do. You're one of the best players in the field. Go out and enjoy it, like embrace it. And it was tough. I mean, he was nervous, but I think he'll learn a lot from it. I think next year he'll play even better. But like you said, it's, it's so different. I mean, having a camera guy run behind you, like they're filming one guy, then they run behind you and you turn around and you've never hit a shot with a TV camera guy behind there. And then Roger Maltby's over here for NBC interviewing people. Like it's it's different, but it's it's awesome, man. That 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 week, I don't know if y'all have been there. You have to go. Yeah. It is the most fun week you can have. Lake Tahoe is beautiful. The people, the atmosphere, can't beat it. Listen, this guy's game's good enough for Tahoe. Mine's not. So cold. If you hear something, if, if they need a guy, remember the name Upshaw because this guy, uh, just be he could compete. I'll but listen, you gotta, you, the, his biggest thing, if you caddy for him, you got to keep his, his head in it. So, Cole, real quick, there's this tournament out here called the Cravens. It's you got to be a member at the same golf tournament, and the first day is legitimately alternate shot scotch. Add them up. You gotta, so I say, give me that fucking phone. I put it in his bag. <laughs> Dude, he absolutely striped it. He hit one loose shot all day. We ended up shooting 76, 70, 76 yeah. 78 as alternate shot. Pretty nuts. Got in the That's championship true. flight. Damn. Didn't work out after that. But when he puts his phone away, Colt, my point being is this guy can strike. I used to like to get on that Instagram, eh? See what's going on. Check out, <laughs> yeah. you know. If you're, if you're ever down to bet to him, you just start looking at things on Instagram, girls or whatever, and you'll, you'll, you'll win the next couple holes. On now that I got, start tweeting him. Yeah, yeah get, now that I got going. kids, though, it's completely different. You know, I'm checking up, seeing how they're doing. It's a whole other different mind fuck, but <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's it's good stuff. Hey, Cole, you teed me up. will drive me crazy. <laughs> yeah, you, you teed me up, buddy. I, I, I love what you're doing for, for the game of golf, um, but I got to ask you the question. I, I, got your, I got your stuff up here. The outfit you got to wear on the course, buddy. I mean, you got the thing around the chest. You got... Like after four days, does it wear on you a little bit, or like it looks like it might get a little bit uncomfortable maybe Sunday afternoon? So I've turned into a little bit of a diva. I don't have to wear the TV monitor around the neck anymore. Um, I did it starting out, you know, with COVID, things were so different, and everything, and that thing it it's a pain in the ass because it pulls on your neck, sucks for your upper back. Uh, but then in the summer, there's a battery on it, and when it's hot out, it was starting to burn my gut. I was literally having this whelp on my gut as a guy and. I was the only one that was carrying it. The other people on our school, on our team had somebody else doing it. I was like, guys, I can't do this in the summer anymore. Like, somebody's got to start carrying it for me. <laughs> so luckily now, you know, I'm being a big diva and somebody else is carrying the TV monitor for me. But it's great. Technology's changed so much. Now I literally have two little clips that are probably like four by four on my belt loop. And then I carry the microphone and somebody's got the monitor. So now... Um, it's not too bad. It used to be a pain in the ass, though. Yeah. He's like, just give me my AirPods and my iPhone. Yeah, I can I just can check this out right here, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly. But yeah, that look right there, that just is like hot and sweaty. My back hurts and... just looking at it. I'm like, dude, my back would be in one, Karen. I feel like you had uh, SEAL Team 6 or something. <laughs> You're going in on a mission. I don't know. Oh, uh, it's <laughs> It was a lot before. I mean, shout out to Peter Costas, who did it for so long. He he always carried it himself. And I was like, my God, how do you do that every single day? Especially like in Memphis in August. Oh, it's dude. The, oh, that Memphis tournament this year. Good God. Poor Lucas Glover. Hottest I've ever been. Poor, poor Lucas Glover and those khaki pants, man. They were just, they didn't stand a chance. Yeah. I, you know, I, people joke around us at CBS, the people that are outside on the ground, we were all black every Sunday. And of course, we did it in Memphis. And I'm just getting worn out for it. And I'm like, well, at least I don't have the swamp ass going like this. You can't see my gut sweat yeah. and my ass sweat and all that. But yeah, that, that was a tough <laughs> one. Friday, Friday at Memphis was the hottest I've ever been in my life. And I think. Pretty much every player echoed that as well. It was just miserable. Uh, Colton, let me ask you this, because, you, you know, you've retired in 2020. You got into media. You started your own podcast, similar to what Obi and I do. As far as, you know, the sport of golf, do you feel like a lot of the golfers leave the game and jump into the game in, in other aspects like this? And if, and if so, have you enjoyed this process? Because you're great on TV. The podcast is great. But we often say, like, hockey guys need a little bit more of a push into the media because... I think hockey needs it, and I think golf needs it too. Your, you know, your view on things is a lot different than you know than just someone who's an analyst, right? So, do you feel like golfers are doing that and getting back in the game? Then Brandel Chambly's output, me. Your, your, your is a little different than Brandel Chambly's, and I'll just leave that that. Hey, yeah, my vocabulary is a little slightly different <laughs> than okay. than Brandel's. Yeah, I love Brandel though, man. He is. I know he gets a lot of shit, but he's really good at his job. 
Um, you know, for me, it's, I'm sure it was like, y'all, like, you don't have a plan B when you're out playing professional sports. It's like, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make millions of dollars. I'm going to ride off into the sunset. Everything's going to be great. The media thing was a, came out of nowhere for me. Um, as far do I wish other players would do it? Yeah, maybe in like 20 years when I'm finished with this. <laughs> I want to keep this job for quite some time. But, you know, I think golf's just so different because it's so boring. Like, golf isn't that exciting to watch. So you need somebody like I me. Mean, you look at David Faraday, Gary McCord, and now myself. Like, we're, we're different. And, you know, we're not scared to make fun of ourselves or make fun of other people and make some jokes and make it entertaining. And that's what we need because, you know, everybody jokes. You can anyone can say he's hitting 700 from 175. Like, that's boring shit. Like, we want to mix it up a little bit because at the end of the day, it's a show. Like, I have no control over the outcome of this golf tournament. I'm just here to make the viewers at home entertained. At least that's that's what I want my job to be. Some people don't like my humor, but that's their problem, not mine. <laughs> as long as CBS still likes it, I'm going to be very happy. But. Man, I've never been happier in my life, honestly. Like, I'm having so much fun. Get to still be out there every week with the guys. You know what I mean? Like you said, I just retired three years ago or quit, whichever way you want to say it. Um, <laughs> and, you know, these are still friends of mine that are out there that are best players in the world. So the fact that I still get to be out there 20 weeks a year, traveling around with them, hanging out with them, and then just talking on TV. Like, I've never been less stressed. Uh, I've never been happier. It's just, it's a blast. I think this is what I was meant to do. Yeah, you're great at it. And by the way, I quit too. I didn't retire. I just quit too. <laughs> like but, well played. Yeah, I just quit too. I don't, well I don't even know if I signed my retirement papers. I just quit. I said, I'm done. But <laughs> cool. You, you, you teed me up, fella. Gary McCord is a guy I absolutely love. I, I have Faraday written down here, Peter Costas. But Gary McCord more for me, like that guy used to make golf so much fun. And when I when I listen to you now, another guy I love is Frank Noblo or Noblo, how you, you give it to him a lot. Yeah. He's great. But was Gary McCord a guy that that you kind of are I've learned from and, and and try to bring that humor because you do have a little bit of that Indian. I I was a huge Gary McCord guy. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, he's a member here at Whisper Rock. He's one of the guys that helped me get into TV. And the first time I ever did it, I was in his tower at LA for Golf Channel on Thursday, and it didn't go that great. Like I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't. I had no clue how TV worked. Like there's not really like a training course or anything like that. It's kind of like here's your headset, here's your microphone, go and afterwards he came and he just chewed my ass and told me he's like dude be yourself like you're being a robot out there just just talk like you would to me without cussing exactly. and uh man he's been such a big help and he was a legend in golf broadcasting there's no doubt i mean he and what made him stand stand alone was how different he was and that's the deal like i mean talking to a bunch of people in the tv business and they give me that compliment it's like listen you're different than every other golf broadcast and you have to stay that way and Listen, I I love it. Um, you know, I know I'm not I'm not for everyone, but I'm just here to liven it up and making it a little more entertaining. Yeah, is Frankie as good as guys I think he is? Because I love that guy. Is he good? You're always giving it to him, which makes me feel like he is a good guy. You know, hopefully I don't. He doesn't listen to this because um, <laughs> I absolutely love that man. Yeah, uh, he's the he's probably the closest I am to anybody on our team. Uh, we hang out a lot together. We ride to the golf course together. He is hilarious, um, and I know he can take it too. Yeah. I know you're never going to hurt Frank's feelings. He'll give it back to me, but, you know, we ride out to the golf course together a lot, and he gets lost no matter what. It is <laughs> comical. Like, I just sit back and wait for him to get lost, and I'm trying to get CBS to put a camera in the car with us because it would be the funniest shit you've ever seen, us yelling at each other. And he's like, was I supposed to exit there? I'm like, yeah, if you'd let me help you with directions, we wouldn't get lost, but he's such a pain in the ass and so stubborn, he won't let me help out. But he is so much fun. I hope he does it for a long time. Um, he's a brilliant dude. And he's sneaky funny. Yeah, that would be good content too. That's a good idea. Colt from uh, from a guy I you know I the last little bit of my career I was hurt, fucking battled injuries, fought back, still crawled. I I, I love the game, but it was always you know it became tough as you get older, right? Just getting up and working through these injuries. From a guy that you know you battled some injuries in your career towards you know towards the end, was it something that you were? You know, was it the injuries that kind of got you away from it, or were you just not your best, not feeling it? What what was kind of in your in your head? What was making those those tough decisions down the stretch for you? Like, yeah, so I had, I had two great years in fifteen and sixteen before I got hurt. I um, ended up having two surgeries on my left hand. I was out nine months twice, and when you, when you're hurt, and you have PGA Tour status. You come back on a major medical. So like basically, I had a full season to make the the points I needed to to keep my status for the next year. Well. When I came back in 2020, like I didn't do it and I knew it was kind of running out and I live here in Scottsdale now and it's so fun. Like I was going to make that my last one and then I was going to figure out what I was going to do. It was either go out on the Corn Ferry Tour and try to grind or, you know, jump into this media thing and see what happens. I had a Sirius XM show at the time. I think the podcast was just getting going 
And so it was kind of, it was a risk because I don't know what was going to happen in media. And at 35, I didn't really think I wanted to go back to the Corn Ferry Tour and play these young, hungry kids coming out of college because I didn't want to be there. They want to be there because they know it's their path to the PGA Tour. So yeah, I took a little bit of a gamble and decided to jump, you know, head first into the media world. And thank God it's worked out so far. Yeah, that, that's amazing because it is scary. Like we meet him, start the podcast and the same thing, you, you know, whoever told you Gary McCord, you were saying like, be yourself or whatever. And, and that's what I told Uppy. I'm like, Uppy, if we're going to do this, let's just be ourselves, fella. Some people are going to like it. Some people are not. And that's, that's what, when I started listening to you, I'm like, this guy, you tell it how it is and you're honest. And I think that's how you can be successful in this business. Yeah. I, I you know, the longtime CBS producer, Lance Barrow, who's a legend does, did NFL golf, everything. He literally told me, he's like, talk like you do at the table at Whisper Rock without saying fuck. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that's, that's fair. And so I just slowly got comfortable into doing that. And now it's just like, it's just like us sitting here talking or me and Frank, we're talking golf at the bar at night. Like that's how I try to take it to the broadcast yeah. and, you know, make some jokes here and there. But also I played out there for eight years. I know how to be serious. I know, I know what these players are facing. I know what they're feeling. I know I didn't win, but you know, I've been in contention plenty of times and um, I, I know what these players are going through. Yeah. It's like, we have a one, one buddy that wants to get involved in the podcast. And I'm like, dude, you, you've been on a couple of times and, and every time the microphone gets put in your face, you just start talking like a completely different person. <laughs> I'm like, it's it, like, no matter how you say you're not, you're like, it's, you, it's not you, dude. I'm like, if you could come in and be yourself, you could do it, but it's not, it's not as easy. Right. Like no, it took us a while. It takes a while. Yeah. And, and we're used to it on the other end, right. Where people are asking us questions. Yeah. Uh, and that was how we were, you know, as a pro athlete, mm -hmm. people would come in with the mic and ask you how you're playing, how's your teammates, what do you, you know, and then so to to reverse it and have just a, you know, let's just be pers like personalities and yeah. let's, you know, bring, and Obi and I often say, we want our listeners to feel like they're sitting in either the, you know, the clubhouse. rock clubhouse yeah. or they're in our yeah. fucking locker room, throwing us taped, taping a stick in between period. That's kind of the feel we got. And it's only there because, you know, we get a chance to be ourselves. Yeah. But we we'll go back cold and listen to some of our early ones. <laughs> oh, buddy, they're 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 they're, they're bad. But like, how, 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 I feel you. How long did it take you to get? Now, are you still like even me and not be like interviewing guys is probably not our, our forte. But like we're getting better. But how is it for you? Are you getting better? Did like how has it come interviewing guys? Because to us, it's one of the hardest things. I feel like I've always been comfortable interviewing people. Yeah. Uh, my my biggest thing is you know being out there and doing interviews occasionally when I'd play well like. If you, I always say you sit down with a journalist, like they're going to do 10 questions. You can predict nine of them. Like it's just the same shit over and over and over. And so when me and Sleaze, Drew, who I do the stuff with, we're like, we just want to be different and just have it be three dudes sitting here, just chopping it up, talking obviously about them, what's going on in the game of golf, but just make it laid back, relax and show that these guys, you know, they're normal humans too. They like to do normal things. They like to go out and get drunk and have a good time, <laughs> watch certain movies, whatever it is. And we're allowed to show that. Like, I know they're robots on TV and when they're out there at golf tournaments and they're told to say certain things. But when you're on the podcast, like, let it loose. Let it rip. Show us who you are. Yeah. And I think that's our biggest thing is we try to make them forget there's a microphone in front of them. That we're just sitting there just having a good conversation. And it just happens to be being recorded. Exactly. And that, that's the same thing we're going here for Mr. Curfew. So, Cole, let's talk some Ryder Cup, fella. We both got a Ryder, yeah. we got a Ryder Cup stuff on you. Uh, a Dare Manor. Have you ever played a Dare Manor in Ireland by chance? No, but I've saw it on TV at the JP McManus Pro Am. I mean, that place looks flawless. It is flawless. It is titty. Yeah, is what yeah. you want to call it? Yeah. It is perfect. I, I mean, love it Ireland. It's as immaculate as Augusta. Yeah. I say that without. Exaggeration. We've never played Augusta, but from no, what we see on TV, I've, I, but I've been there, so I walked it. Oh, yeah. But anyway, uh, the caddy, like everything from don't pick up a tee, like definitely don't try to put your divot back in the place. Yeah. It, it's immaculate in the castle, and you know, and and then. They've done a good job preparing this for the Ryder Cup in 27. They've got all, you know, for the TV, they've got all the wires underneath the fairways already yeah. for the cameras and everything. Oh, wow. It's yeah, it's made for TV and it's going to be a spectacle for for listeners. Yeah, you're you're going to you're going gonna to like walking those fairways, buddy, at the 27 yeah. Ryder Cup. But <laughs> let, let, let's talk right, let's talk uh, this year's Ryder Cup. Um you're obviously heading over to Rome. It's going to be exciting. Let's talk about Zach Johnson, a guy that that I've respected a lot through his playing career, bulldog on the course. I've loved the way he handled himself in the media, right? I, 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 I the way he handled the announced the team. He seems like a team guy. You've just had him on your podcast. Explain to me what your thoughts are on Zach Johnson, how he will be in the captain role. Love Zach Johnson, and like you said, I mean, he's so well respected. There's not one person in the world of golf that could say a bad thing about Zach Johnson. These guys love him. They're going to lay it all on the line for him. But I think he's going to be great. He, most importantly, he's been there. 
Yeah. Uh, I think he's played five Ryder Cups, and then I'm not sure how many President's Cups. Two-time major champion, Augusta National, St. Andrews for the Open Championship. This guy's a Hall of Famer, and he's respected. He's into it. I mean, I remember he was a vice captain at the President's Cup, and I rode along with him. Oh, oh, and Justin Thomas's match, and I mean, it's like he's playing. He's fist pumping when he's getting out there. He's high fiving the guys. Like he is, he's all in. And so I'm pumped for him to get over there. I think he's the perfect guy to end this thirty year thirty year drought. Yeah, thirty years. It's crazy. That that is, it's not yeah. 30, years 30. thirty. Well, by but, the way, Brian Harmon, who's the oldest guy on the team, was six years old the last time. USA won over that. That's crazy. That's crazy. Wild. Hey, so and there's like five of them that weren't born. <laughs> <laughs> to, to the listeners out there who, you know, maybe don't know much about Rome and the golf course, is there any sort of, you know, does the USA have any advantage to this golf course being in Rome and not like, you know, the typical Irish, Scottish type golf course with the with the weather and stuff? Is the, could this be their year they turn it around because it's in a different country? I think they can definitely turn it around this year, and it's not because of the golf course. I think it's just because they're freaking that good. I mean, they are loaded. I mean, these guys, are su- all of them are superstars. I haven't seen the golf course yet, but talking to Max, Colin Morikow, and a bunch of the guys, it's like, listen, there's there's room off the tee, but if you do miss, you're going to get punished. The rough's insane. The greens are pretty wild. They're going to be – all the whole locations will be in certain little sections and stuff like this. So if we can put the ball in the fairway, I love our chances. I think this is where we got killed in Paris. It's like their team doesn't hit any straighter than our our team does, in my opinion. It's they know how to adapt to the golf course. Like at Paris, our guys were shipping driver down there every yeah. single hole, playing out of the rough every hole. Their guys were laying back, just making sure they were in the fairway, and I think that's why they smoked us. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of strategy Team USA takes into this thing. Cole, I'm a golf nerd. I was actually watching on the golf channel, the the, the Ryder Cup from Paris there a couple of weeks ago. And she was narrow there, though, huh? It was yeah. narrow. There was water everywhere. And, yeah, the Americans just kept trying to bomb her down there. I was like, oh, these poor, like, <laughs> and Tiger was just, remember how t- t- uh, t- tired Tiger was? And that, but, yeah, it was really narrow. Yeah, Tiger just won the Tour Championship like four days before that thing started. So he was gassed. But, yeah, they got absolutely smoked over there. That was a, that was a rough one. I expect it to be. No matter who wins, I think it's going to be very competitive. Yeah, and when, when we're talking about Zach Johnson as captain, obviously the biggest difference or one of the biggest difference in the Ryder Cup and the President's Cup is in the President's Cup, you get to know who you're going to put out there, right? In the Ryder Cup, you don't. Like, to me personally, Cole, I, I wish it was kind of the way it was in the President's Cup. Do you think it, it would be – what's your feeling on that? Because as a captain, I wish I kind of knew who you were going to put out. Like, Or, or do they have a feel for it deep down? Like, will Zach know deep down what's going to go on? So Sleaze and I talk about this all the time because I'm with you. Like we like we like there's especially if there's like some animosity between two guys yeah. or a couple of guys. Like, hey, we're gonna put so and so out. I'm gonna match you with him, and there's gonna be some drama, which makes great TV. Exactly. Um, I'm all for that. We had Roy McIlroy on our podcast recently, and he's like, he likes the Ryder Cup just because he's like their strategy. It's you got to think, okay, so Luke Donald's gonna put so and so probably here, so I need to put so and so here, which I get. But I'm all for the made for TV stuff, like. I'm convinced the Roy McIlroy versus Patrick Reed match at Hazeltine was 100% set up. You know, they were both big trash talkers, both really into it. Patrick Reed, you know, Captain America, whatever he was. Yeah. Um, I think that was set up. But I I love the way the President's Cup does it. You throw a team out, I'll throw one out. Then I'll throw one out, you throw one out. Do the guys get it, you know, do they get after each other a little bit? Like hockey guys, are they chirping a little bit? Are they looking at the guy? Like, because, I mean, last year with the fist pumps and everything and the roar, like, I'm going to... I'm going to make this putt and have a bigger roar than yours last. What kind of what kind of edge do you think these guys try to pull with each other in this sort of thing? Yeah, I, th- I think it depends on the guy. Like, And I think that's why Justin Thomas is so important to this team. And that's why I thought it was an easy no-brainer pick. Like, He's that guy. He lives and dies for the Ryder Cup. He loves it so much. He'll be the guy over there chirping back to the fans. You know, not scared to play some gamesmanship here and there, trash-talking who he's playing. And I love that about him. I think that's what the Ryder Cup needs. Um, I think a lot of it depends on, you know, the match. You know, who's who's playing who. But there's definitely some chirping going on. Cole, I'm not a big I'm not a big morning golf guy, right? So if I was on the Ryder Cup team, I would come and say, hey, fella, I'm, I'm going to take the morning session off. Does, does, does that ever happen to a certain extent? You think, like, maybe if you wake up, you're like, hey, Zach, you know, I didn't sleep great. Maybe I'll just ride around the cart here today. Like, is there anything that goes into that? Or these boys are just like, I'll tee it off at 7 a.m. I don't give a shit. 
Well, you're playing for the Ryder Cup, and, yeah. and you're putting the red, white, and blue on for Team USA. You better be ready to go. I don't yeah. care what time it is. Yeah. So, no, I don't think there's any of that. <laughs> you don't if think... there is, I'm extremely disappointed. Yeah. Just stay in and get the pancakes. Like, kind, of a, yeah. kind of a soft mattress last night, Zach. I'm like, Max, kind of, I don't know if I want to go out there this morning against Rory yeah, or not. beds in Rome here. They're tiny. Yeah. Cool. I got to ask you about our boy, Freddie Couples. He's a, he's a member at Big Canyon. We've got to know Freddie over the years. He's an absolute beauty. Nobody... I think rides in the golf cart better than Freddie. I mean, he's just a greenless, looks good standing up on it. How important is he to Ryder Cup teams, President Cup teams, and, and how much of a say or how much will Zach lean on him? Freddie's the guy that everybody loves, right? Like you said, he's the coolest guy in the room and everywhere he goes. Uh, everything he does looks really cool. And I just think he presents, he makes, he's such a calming presence, right? Like he, he knows when guys are freaking ridiculously nervous. He goes over, makes some little joke, gives him a little slap on the ass, whatever it is. He just knows how to make everyone feel so comfortable. I mean, look at his record as captain of the President's Cup team. Like, he's absolutely killed it. And so it's no surprise that he's a part of all of these teams. I hope one day he's a captain of a Ryder Cup team. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. But I love Freddie. Huge fan. Um, I was forced at a young age to love him because my mother had a massive crush on him. Yeah. I'm sure, like, pretty much every woman in America did. Yeah, I yeah. know. I remember the. And I'll never forget. We go to the tee, and I was like, I wasn't supposed to play with him that day. And this is right when I retired. I was probably a ten handicap, and my one buddy TD goes, "Hey, you and up here playing with Freddie today?" I'm like, "What? Well, what?" I go, "I don't know if my game's ready. I don't know if my game's ready for Freddie here." But I, I, I somehow scrapped it around. But uh, just to te just to tee that question up a little bit more, is, is there a reason why Freddie hasn't been the Ryder Cup captain in your opinion, or is his time to come in the near future? You think? That's a great question. You know, I know they used to do it because it's the PGA of America. Like you had to be a PGA champion. Um, well, Zach Johnson's obviously not a PGA champion, so I don't know. I'm a little surprised. I guess we've obviously had a lot of great captains throughout our day, but uh, I'm a little surprised Freddie has never been one. Yeah, um, he's just he's loved and respected by all those guys. Makes it fun. I'm I, I figured he would be one, honestly. Still bombs at Freddie too. Still bombs it. Yeah. How about uh, how about this guy? How about uh, Michael Michael Jordan? So who, you know, a big supporter of the team, we had a chance to play behind him uh, a couple months ago at his golf course at the Grove. But what does he mean to that group of guys, too? Like, he's always there with tracksuit on, kind of with the stogie looking cat good. looking eyes, you know, like making sure you got a nice guy to have in your corner for those boys. I've heard he has his own kind of day club this year over in Rome. So he's going to have his own little hospitality area. He, he tells me, you know, I've, I've been lucky enough to play golf with him a few times. And he's the Ryder Cup's his favorite sporting event. He just he loves watching those guys. He's a golf nut, as you know. Him. He plays thirty six holes every day. It's crazy. So he loves it. Um, obviously loves the team competition. And I think him being out there, the guys want to show off for him because all these guys growing up. I mean, they're like Mike. It's it was Michael Jordan and Tiger Woods, right? Like those are your two guys that you grew up watching. And you're like, holy shit, that's Michael Jordan out here watching me. Like I want to show off in front of this guy. And it's it's really cool that he's kind of embraced the Ryder Cup and has a great relationship with a lot of these guys talk about tiger woods like how about when, when you know when you came on tour where where was tiger in his career then or, or what was your first experience of showing up to a tournament where you know you just look down and there he is like was it was it that big of a oh my god or what was your experience but oh yeah so, yeah yeah big time yeah. um i mean tiger was the reason you know i really dove into golf i was 12 years old when he won the masters in 97 and i'll never forget i mean that's what really made me want to play professional golf and my first ever one in the same tournament same was 2008 at Bay Hill. So he won the, he won the, um, he won the U S open later that year. So he was still prime tiger. This was before. And I remember at Bay Hill, he used to live at our He would warm up at his house and they get in the car and drive 10 minutes down. Well, if you've ever been to Bay Hill, you walk out of the men's locker room towards the putting green. It's like a hallway. that's like 20 or 30 yards long. And I remember he was, I was two groups behind him on Thursday and I hadn't seen him all week. And I walk out of the locker room and there's, hundred media people lined up against the wall and all of a sudden you hear this <laughs> these spikes on the ground and i turn around and it's tiger i jumped up against the wall with the media <laughs> people and let him walk by i'm like oh my god there he is was so nervous yeah um, i told him that story a few years ago and he just laughed you're an idiot but that's how big a deal he was man like you you see i remember guys when they first would come out like tory pines would always be where he'd start his season out in san diego and there would be rookies on the pj tour filming him on the range, warming up. I'm like, dude, you've got to beat that guy. Yeah. You can't be out here fanboying over him. But uh, that's how big it is. I mean, it's like Wayne Gretzky in y'all sport. Like, you see, I mean, I still laugh. You go up there to Gaza, and I mean, all the hockey guys, if Wayne snaps, I mean, they're like, what can I do? What can I do? I mean, anything. Yeah. It's, <laughs> he's the man. 
Yeah. That's how Tiger is in our sport. Yeah, Wayne is the man. And I and I had I played against Wayne when he was coaching Uppy in Phoenix, but throughout my whole playing career, I, I never got to meet Wayne Gretzky. So finally I met him and then Uppy hooked us up with a round of golf at the Grove. And people asked me how is it? I said, he's a better guy than he is a hockey player. Yeah. Which is like, dude, I mean, I was blown away with hanging out with him. Like how how he remembered all the hockey stories, how good of a guy he was, how he cared about people. To me, that's why he's the great one. Like he's just unbelievable. I love the guy. He sat with my now wife at Gaza for 30 minutes at the bar, just them two talking. And she got done. I just let it go. And she got done and she goes, all right, she comes over. I was like, do you have any idea who you're talking to? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, Wayne. I'm like, you know who Wayne is? She's like, no clue. I was like, that's Wayne Gretzky, the great one. Yeah. And they, I mean, we'll have that story forever. It's so cool. She had no clue who he was though. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, your boy, Max Homa, I texted him, said you're coming on. He said, oh, first, he said, first of all, you got a big match on Saturday. So go get him, go get him. And then he said, second of all, he's got a little running joke with you that you're always in Rory's group. Why Why do you always get to go in Rory's group? You're an American guy. What's going on with the, the with the Rory love? Max has get, got so butthurt about this at the Tour Championship. <laughs> so, or Tour Championship, or it was BMW, I think. BMW, Max was in the next to last group, and normally that's who I go with, unless there's, you know, something crazy going on or anything like that. And Rory was in the third to last group. And so I walk on the range. He's like, you going with us today? I'm like, no, he's like, are you freaking going with Rory again? <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I just go where I'm told. Like, Rory's obviously a star in the game, but it's funny. I mean, he's literally was texting. We have this match, uh, myself and Joe Griner, who's his caddy, and then Wyndham Clark and Max on Saturday, getting him obviously ready for the Ryder Cup. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. Uh, but he's like, oh, are you going to be okay without Rory out there? I'm like, dude, <laughs> get over it. You know you're still my guy. Max is my favorite. I was just at this corporate deal the other day just telling all these great Max Soma stories and, you know, how he went from just obviously – nothing i mean Dude. making two cuts in a season and finishing last to now one of the best players in the world and no one could be happier for him than me and no one is less surprised than me like i've always known this kid has so much game he is great for the game of golf i mean his personality and the fact that he'll actually show it love it we need more guys like that i couldn't agree with you more and, and we, we play with max back in the day and this is the year you're talking about where you know he's only made two cuts and we play with them and on the back now we're starting to get to know each other he's like oh, i'm just struggling right now i said let's go we're going out so I took him out in Newport Beach, had a great night. But when, when, when I met him, same as you, like, I followed him at the Canadian Open. He went bogey, bogey, double, and then, and then I just, like, left. I just stopped watching him because I felt bad. But <laughs> to where he is now, yeah. it's – and like you said, he's so good for the game. His personality, too, he uses it as his strength, right? It's like his confidence builder. He's, he's witty, he's smart, he's funny, and you can just tell, like, that followed his confidence. And then the play and the success came with it, too. It was, like, the perfect storm for him, but – couldn't be more happier. He's been great with us, and I hope he has a great weekend over there next week. Yeah, it'll be obviously a huge stage for him, but, I mean, you know, his golf's made him a lot of money, but that personality, yeah. I mean, companies want to be involved with that, and that's one thing I think a lot of guys could learn from Max. Like, dude, it's okay to show your personality. It's okay to have fun, joke around on social media. Like, that's what people love, and he's he's letting his clubs do the talking, but also his personality has just killed it. Totally. When we bumped into him a couple years ago at the Waste Management, he came over to, and I said, how great is it that people want you to roast their golf swing? People are setting their swing in and they want you to roast the max. He's like, I know, I just kind of started doing it as a joke and it turned into, and he does it tastefully. Like I used to say, Colt, the guys, I'm like, listen, if you want to chirp in the dressing room, you got to be tasteful. Like, you got to make a good chirp. And, and, and that's what Max is so great on social media. It's tasteful, it's funny, and it's, it's just good. It's unbelievable, too, how like recognizable he is. He missed the cut up in Hartford this year. I was doing TV. He's like, let's go out for some drinks Friday night. And I'm like, sure. So we go out Friday and Saturday, of course. But every bar we go to, I mean, these dudes are lining up to take pictures with him. And I was like, Max, here's the deal. We got to start making something off this thing. Like every pitcher, George Brett used to do this. Every pitcher, you have to buy him a beer. I'm like, so here's the deal. Every pitcher, Max, either, I know you can't drink them all, so send them over this way. But let's, let's at least get some free drinks out of your fame. Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. That, that's smart thinking. But uh, let me ask you that on, on on a weekend where a couple of your boys on tour don't make the cut, are they wanting to go have beers with you? Is that like the standard thing on the weekends? Great that, question. It, it must be tough for you to be like, "Fuck, here we go again." <laughs> nah, I'm I'm used to it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good with it. Yeah, um, you know, we don't start our TV till two o'clock pretty much every day. I, I can shake the cobwebs out by them, but I'm there for my guys. If they want to go out and have a good good night on the town, I'm there for it because I missed plenty of cuts in my day. Yeah, I was just going to say, listen, if I was on the PGA Tour and I missed the cut, I know what, how I would have reacted. I would have went out Friday night and been the drunkest guy in the city where you probably should have been practicing. But how did you handle the cuts? Did you party that? Did you have a couple beers that weekend? Or, or what was your mentality when you missed it? I always laughed. I said it was amazing how 
with as soon as I would finish on Friday evening or Friday afternoon, my phone went would, would go nuts. But it was all the other guys that missed the cut. Yeah. Like, let's get after it. But yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you got to go blow off some steam, right? You're not happy you missed the cut. Um, yeah. I was all about going out and having some fun Friday and then figuring out what the plan was next. Get get some work in on Sunday or just ride through the weekend. And then normally what would happen is one of your buddies would win. So then you'd have to go out on Sunday night and celebrate with him. Yeah. So then you're pretty much torn up till Tuesday. Is there a city in the? Is there like a sleeper town and on tour where you're like kind of hoping you miss you miss the gut just <laughs> just because you're like well you're I'm already like, ah, I'm fuck. already out here fuck it so I got the weekend off now is there that little sleeper town? Oh, we you know we don't go to many bad towns no and you true. never want to miss the gut like in Phoenix isn't a sleeper but like the fact that there's the birds nests and all that at night like it makes it like it, it kind of soothes the pain a little bit. Uh, there is a really fun one because of one place um, the John Deere. Up in uh, in oh, Silver, wow. the Quad Cities, there there's a restaurant called Duck City, which I go to every single night, and the staff is incredible. Um, we have a great time there. They they do an awesome job, and the bar is fantastic. So that that's definitely the biggest sleeper. That is the biggest Duck sleeper City. ever. Yeah. I would have never thought you would have said the John Deere Classic, but but how about the old Byron Nelson back in the day? The one in Dallas that used to be a good shaker, right? Tommy Armour the third used to throw a big shaker, didn't he? He did, right? His house was right off the range there at TPC Los Colinas. That was a fun one. That was my first ever one. I Monday qualified in college, um, went to that party a few times. He stopped doing it. I actually took it over, but I did it at a bar instead of a, a house because yeah. I didn't want to destroy my house. Uh, but, man, yeah, that that was a good one. That The biggest mistake I think they ever made was moving it from Los Colinas. Like, Los Colinas wasn't the greatest golf course, but it was the perfect party atmosphere. It was the perfect PGA Tour event. It was, it was a show. I mean, you had the four seasons there and got massive crowds. Um, that was a big mistake when they moved away. Cole, I'm going to ask you to put your captain's hat on for a bit to be Zach Johnson. Is there any pairs that you think will be good that that maybe you would pick or that you've heard? Like, who do we think, like, are we going to see Spieth and Thomas? Or who do you think Max is going to with? Is there a couple pairings that you can maybe, what you think will happen? I think Spieth and Thomas are a given. Yeah. Xander Schauffele, Patrick Cantlay, given. I think Xander and Patrick go out first Friday morning if it's not Jordan and Justin. Um, I like to see Max with, uh, Colin Moore, Kawa, perhaps, um, you know, California, I mean, Wendell Clark, who he plays a lot of golf with here could be a really good team. One team that I hope they do just because both of them have the biggest chips on their shoulders and play with some attitude. I would put Brian Harmon and Brooks Kepka together. I think they would go out just alpha male and just play and just want to destroy everyone. I think they'd be a great team. Is Harmon that? Is, I want. Yeah, he got an edge. Like I want to ask you about Harmon. Oh, buddy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, an dude, edge to him. Yeah. He's a little guy, and yeah. he's got a little lefty. Attitude. I'm a lefty too. Fuck, I, dude, yeah. when, his comments after you won the the Open Championship, where like these people were yelling, I'm like, you don't have the nuts. There's no way you'll do it. And he was like, fuck it. Like in his mind, he's like, yeah, I love it. Bring it on. Bring it on. Like yeah. he, he is, is a bulldog. Yeah, you would love him. He is awesome. He talks a lot of shit. Doesn't put up with any of it. He has always played with a chip on his shoulder, man. I think those two could go out and cause some problems. Just, 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 I guess you answered this part of it, but like Wyndham Clark, and you could, I guess you can throw Harmon in there, but like obviously great U.S. Open champ, Open championship, but for those guys coming in as rookies, does that scare you a little bit that, that you know, they're there because they won a major championship, but they haven't had this taste and it's on, you know, European soil? You know, I think it does. It, you definitely are a little, little worrisome about it, but my deal with Brian Harmon is, and I know it's not the same level, but he played two Walker Cups, which is the amateur version of the Ryder Cup. It's a big deal. And he has thrived in that situation. So I'm not worried about him at all. You know, Wyndham, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Wyndham sit Friday morning just to kind of be able to take it all in, be out there, see what that first tee is like, and then go out and get after it. But, yeah, I think you're always a little nervous about the rookies just because it's it's way different. I mean, when you hear the greatest of all time talk about how nothing compares to the nerves they have at the Ryder Cup, it, it's hard to prepare for. It. So I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a guy like Wyndham possibly sit, but – these guys are so good at golf, man. They'll figure it out. Yeah, I was nervous in a horse race. I'd shit my pants on the first <laughs> tee of the Ryder Cup. <laughs> hey, Colt, let's talk term Team Europe. You just had Rory on your podcast, I believe, last week. But, you know, they got Rom, Rory, Terrell Hatton, who I love the way he plays, Fleetwood, Victor Hovland, who obviously won the FedEx Cup, Justin Rose, good Irishman, Shane Lowry. Like, when you talk about depth, you obviously favor USA, but they got some gamers on this squad, obviously. Uh, that dude, and they're all playing so well. Even now, the guys that got picked, other than like Nick Loy um, who I was a little yeah. surprised by. The who pick. is that? Um, who is that? By yeah, the way? Exactly. <laughs> he's a twin. Okay, he, he, he's got an identical twin brother. So if he's not playing well, they could probably sub him in, and no one would know. <laughs> Seems like a guy's but, gonna wear tight pants out there. 
Oh, 100 <laughs> percent But you look at that team. I mean, you mentioned John Rom, Victor Hovland, who just won the FedEx Cup, Rory, um, Terrell Hatton, who's one of my favorite people in the game of golf. He's fucking incredible. He's got uh there's nobody more entertaining to follow than Terrell. Um, Tommy Fleetwood, love him. Um, their their squad's good. You look when the Ryder Cup ended at Whistling Straits and USA just boat raced them. They planned on this team being dominant for years. I mean, you could bet on it. And USA was like minus 325. Now it's down to minus 110, 115. I mean, it just shows you how well Europe is playing. Obviously, things have changed with Team USA and the record overseas. But Europe's a problem, man. They're really, really good. It's going to be fun to watch. My one buddy calls Fleetwood Fairway Jesus. That's what he calls oh, him. Oh, yeah. Fair, Fairway Jesus. Is that his nickname? Is that his nickname? I, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he goes with that. He is, man, what a ball striker that yeah. guy is. The fact that he hasn't won on the PGA Tour yet is shocking. Yeah, his, I was, his iron play is his ball, crispy oh, right. It's it's disgusting. Crispy right. It's like your eight iron you <laughs> hit in that hole in one. It's crispy. Hey, were you there at the Canadian Open? Uh, was it a CBS event when Nick Taylor won that? Or was that, were you there for that? Oh, yeah, buddy. I buddy, was there. What a gong show, huh? The coolest thing I've ever seen, man. Wow. Uh, and, like, listen, everybody loves Tommy, like I said. But the the, the drought, you know, the Canadian Open had with, without a Canadian winner, the, that crowd was about as loud as I've ever seen. I, honestly, it's probably the loudest crowd I've ever seen. And to follow that playoff for four holes or whatever it was, I, I mean, I was nervous for him. I mean, he had the weight of an entire country on his back. And to do that, to make the 75-footer, whatever it was, and Jim Nance's call, Gloria and Free, like, yeah. God damn, that was so special. That I've I've never heard of a place so loud as when that putt went in. Yeah, it was crazy. And then Adam Hadwin took the took the body check like a good Canadian, but <laughs> fuck, did he get floored? Yeah, I was like, he holy did. jeez, man. Were you on that? That green? was. Uh, Were you on that green? I was just off the green because yeah. I was. I, I I believe I had Tommy in the playoff, and Mark Immelman was covering um, Nick Taylor, and so we were going back. So I was standing there. I was waiting on. <laughs> I was planning on Tommy Fleetwood having a putt to force another hole. Yeah. And then Nick Taylor said, no, sir, we're done here. But, man, that was cool. I was so happy for him. I love Nick Taylor. You know, he lives here in Phoenix part of the year. One of the nicest guys on tour. Yeah, I, I want to ask you just um, if you – what about some pairs on Team Europe? Is there any? Is there anyone like – would they ever go Mick McElroy and Rom, or do they put the two eye like like what do you think uh, for Team Europe for pairings? If we're looking to bet on it, maybe or what is what's your feel on it? It's tough, you know. I haven't sat down and like broken that down yeah. quite as much. I would have to look at some of the past ones, but obviously they got a lot of new guys on the team with a bunch of their older guys going to live and not being eligible. Um, yeah, I mean, we saw what happened with Hal Sutton when he threw Tiger and Phil out there. It didn't go so well. Yeah. So if you do throw Rory and John Rom out there, it better they better win, or you're going to get. Yeah, uh, crucified for it, but I love Rory and Terrell Hatton. Yeah, I don't know why. They're just off the top of my head, I just really like those guys. I could see Tommy Fleetwood and John Rom playing together. Um, you know, all the other guys. There's just some of their guys, like like I mentioned, Nikolai Hoygaard, um, Bob McIntyre. Like I just don't know quite enough about them, like what their games like. But this thing, man, it's going to be so. I, th I expect it to be a battle. I'm predicting 15-13 USA. Will there be a guy? There it is. Will there be a guy to your? Uh, you know, let's just guesstimate here. Will there be a guy that goes perfect? Uh, and if so, which guy in the tournament do you think? Like his game is going right now. Just so I can stick it to everybody, I really hope Justin Thomas goes undefeated because I've gotten absolutely murdered for saying I thought he should be on the team, and then when he got picked, I said I told y'all he was going to be on the team. I've gotten just so much hate for this. This one guy bet me a tattoo bet. Versus me getting him around at the Sawgrass. <laughs> he has to tattoo my name on his body after Justin. Went, all he has to do is win one point, by the way. But Justin Thomas, he lives for this stuff. Yeah. I mean, you look in Paris when we got dummied, he went four and one. He was the only bright spot other than Tony Finau for the team. So I'm hoping Justin Thomas goes out there and goes undefeated. That'd be great for me. Yeah, and I'm with you on JT making it like for all the reasons you said. I was just hoping Keegan Bradley, Colt, honestly. We we know Keegan a little bit. I thought he had a great year. He's been in the Ryder Cup. And listen, they all can't make the team. It's like trying to play for Canada in the Olympics. Like, fuck, we could put two teams out. I'm with you on JT, but but Keegan probably deep down deserved it as well, right? He had a great year. He, uh, I mean, like you said, there's 12 jerseys. Yeah, right? exactly. I mean, you, you can't pick everyone. Yes, he had a great year. Yeah. Did he have a better year than Justin Thomas? Absolutely. But Justin Thomas means a lot to that team. Everybody loves Keegan. Um, it's, I thought the more controversial pick was Sam Burns. Like, I thought you could have put Keegan in over Sam Burns. I thought Justin was a lock the entire time. You know, I don't know if you saw the story about Keegan that came out on Barstool today. They just sat down with him and they asked him how he found out about about the team. 
And I guess he got a text from Zach Johnson the night before saying, hey, I'm calling everybody tomorrow. And all of a sudden, you know, the next morning, Netflix calls. And like, hey, we have a camera crew showing up in five minutes to your house. And he's like, oh, my God, this, this has got to mean that I made it. Like, he was so excited about it. Camera crew shows up. Zach calls and tells him he doesn't make it. No. So apparently you're going to be able to see the reaction and everything that's when Full brutal. Swing On 2 full comes s- out. But, <laughs> wow. But I mean, talk about – he said that was the first time he let his brain go to actually thinking, holy shit, I made the team. Yeah. Oh, um, that's it happened to be the other way around. That's yeah. a bummer. I love Keegan. He's great. Yeah, we love Keegs too. Yeah. 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 By the way, I, lo- pick everyone. I love that full swing Netflix thing too. It's unbelievable. It's so great. Yeah, they do a good so job. so great for golf. It's so great for everything. Just like you, brother, you're great for golf. I appreciate you taking the time, my man. Safe travels. Hey, the food in Rome, by the way, buddy. Heads up. You are going to enjoy It's unbelievable. I'm going to get off my grilled chicken and broccoli diet. <laughs> You're going to Hey, buddy, I'm a big guy. Listen, when you eat the pasta over there, it's not like eating it here. You, you eat it and you can, yeah, eat more, you can eat yeah. more of it. It's weird. You, you watch. You'll, you'll eat it and you won't be too full. It's crazy. It's different than here. Great. Can't wait. No, man. Thank you all so much for having me. Y'all doing an incredible job. Huge fans. Really appreciate it. Tell uh, Max to get over it. Yeah, hey, take some money from Max on Saturday, will you? Safe travels, my man. Go USA. You got it. Thanks, guys.